Hey everybody, it's Glenn back with another Clash Royale analysis video. The No Tilt League Special Edition has been going on for the past couple of uh, days, and it's just been pretty nutty with all the matches that have been going on, especially this game that we're going to uh, break down here between Blastoff and Chivas Gaming. It was Anaban Iulia versus the God RF. This was in the 1v1, game three to decide everything. So the God RF starts off with Hut. Anabon brings out Flying Machine, and the God RF brings in Musketeer to stop Flying Machine. So already we have the God RF with a really good, um, noticeable push on both sides here. I really, I, I really thought, okay, this is going to be, he, he's establishing Temple right here. And they got two shots in. So that's even, that's a big plus, especially given the stakes. I imagine both guys were nervous in this situation to uh, get the win. Here comes Hogs. And the God RF answers with Skeletons, Snowball, and Baby Dragon. So Skeletons, Snowball, and Baby Dragon, I believe that is 12 Elixir to answer a 5 Elixir Royal Hogs. But he gets the stop and... And now he has a full healthy dragon on the right side being able to make a push. So it ends up, I, I would say, I would, I mean, a lot of us would probably take, the, take that. I would take that. I would do that. I, I'd probably be freaking out and doing that. You know, a lot of, if you're playing against Royal Hogs and you're trying to get to Legendary or, you know, trying to move it up, moving up in the ranks, it, it could be that you may face a situation where you're having to just, dump as much elixir as possible to, to make that stop. And if you can turn that into something, that's totally fine here. So while that's going on, we have the knight who's almost at the tower. And here comes a tornado, gets a king act, um, activation. But what was interesting about that, I thought that was so weird when I looked at that again. He gets a slice right on just before he gets that King Tower activation. That I thought, oh, because I, I, I kept watching the 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 hits and the interactions as they were going on uh, as I was, you know, breaking down this game, and I was like, oh wow, why did what? I couldn't understand how that that how that hit happened, and. Yeah, it, it's just it was just so weird looking at it, especially now. It's and with the stakes, you know, this this notable with uh, the the whole match on the line here. Okay, we got an ice wizard. Just gonna answer this baby dragon. I take him out, and that's fine. So ice wizard's gonna be gone. And really now, if you look at this situation here, it's about you know both players can really set up for their next attack. But if you look at the situation here, it's about what the God RF wants to do. It's about where he wants to go because Anaban ha hasn't done much damage to the tower. Yeah, he's gone to the right side. He's answered the the baby dragon here with an ice horse that came down. But it's the God RF who has done damage to the tower. Does he want to go on the right side and make sure that he is taking care of what... Anaban is going to throw at him on the right side, or does he want to go for this tower right here, who's already done damage? It's a lot of, it, it's it's something that a lot of us players are are always having to ask ourselves as we deal with a kind of a break in the game. Do we want to go to the side where our opponent tried to attack, or do we want to go to our side where we've already done some damage? And we want to try to attempt to do more, even though we're probably going to have to um, make sure we're defending weak side. Uh, weak side, in this case, being the right side here. So the God RF, it was really, I think this situation was on him to continue the game. And he does so by going to the left side. This Musketeer was really, it really looked out of place here. And then actually, I'll, let me rewind to the huts here. Because you see this hut is a little bit to the back. And the God RF's hut is a little bit higher up. It doesn't look like much. But it, you remember the King Tower is activated here. So Anaban has a little bit more 
room to play with. Not by much, but he does have some room to play with. The God RF still has a king that's uh, kind of playing spectator at this point. And so that's why the, the huts there are are not in not kind of identical, but uh, they're close. So you can see why uh, that is the case. So the God RF brings Musketeer here. And th like I said, this looks out of place, but it really doesn't because, as you saw earlier, Anaban has brought in Earthquake and Royal Hawks. Now, with this situation here with the Musketeer, the God RF is telling Anaban, okay, you're going to have to make a decision. Yes, you're going to want to use Earthquake on Hut, but do you want to put the circle where the Hut and the Princess Tower is going to be taken care of, and this Musketeer goes free, which is basically this Musketeer is going to pick off every Spear Goblin that comes through over here. Or do you want to position the Earthquake to where Musketeer gets weakened and the Hut gets weakened, but the Princess Tower stays alive? So this is this positioning here and this placement by the God RF. It looks off, but it's really... He's he's trying to get gain intel on what Anaban's going to do. He's kind of like saying, okay, it was my turn to make a decision on where we're going to go and, and decide all these battles. Now it's your turn on what you want to do in terms of going forward here. So we have that musketeer right at the river picking off anybody who is coming in. And Anaban brings in Valkyrie. And it looks like that hut's going down, but here comes Knight. Okay, that's a really good Knight placement. It's going to protect the Spear Goblins until they get hit by Earthquake. So here comes all these Spear Goblins. And they get wiped out by Barbarian Barrel. Here comes Baby Dragon. And there are the Royal Hogs on the weak side. Snowball and Skeletons. And Anaban is getting some really good damage off that. But let's rewind that for a second. Because when I was looking at this game, and I mentioned the God RF, he's, if he looked back at this game, he's probably one or two. Maybe that Baby Dragon could have been a little bit to the right, but still be on, on, on strong side here. So let me, what I mean here, if we re rewind this here, so you see in this placement here, Baby Dragon got dropped right here. If Baby Dragon came like right two tiles over, he's not going to get all of the Royal Hogs here. And and that's and I would say almost I would almost say that's fine. But he's going to get at least one of them. And in this case like as we saw earlier, Baby Dragon skeletons and uh, giant snowball that's a that's a huge um that's a huge trade-off to get rid of those um those royal hogs or at least take care of them in in that situation here so that was i i i, I wondered about that as um he dropped that and maybe anaban saw that and said okay it's time to go with um royal hogs Because Baby Dragon didn't even get a, a hit on the tower. So after all this, we're going to go into double time. And the God RF still has the lead. He decides to put Hut on the back here. So he's going on the right side now. He's going to answer what Anabon's going to bring over here. Musketeer gets played on the back. So I imagine there's an earthquake coming. That's, guess, that's the case. Now, that's kind of an unfortunate situation by the night right here to just get dropped right as Earthquake's coming in. Uh, he's he's a tank. So Baby Dragon comes in, trying to distract, but Flying Machine is doing its job, poison up here. So, and this is the situation here where, if you look at it, and we can rewind this here in a, in a moment, everybody got taken care of. This push here with Graveyard Poison got answered. Or I shouldn't say it was a, well, I mean, yeah, it was a graveyard poison. This, everybody got taken care of over here. Everybody got taken care of over here. 
And here comes Anubon, who's going to answer, who's going to bring in the next challenge with these royal hogs and a spear goblin over here. With the Valkyrie that's being answered by Knight. Can they get rid of everybody? Not really. Those hogs are having fun. And now Anubon has the lead. The God RF is going to go back to the left side. So whew, this is this is really <laughs> this is really something else. So the baby dragon now the baby dragon over here was I, I wondered about this because I wouldn't say you know if I were playing this game I would have saved just baby baby dragon for all the royal hogs. I don't think you can do that. I I know he probably saw something in it where. He had an opportunity. He he feels like he has an opportunity to go with graveyard poison again with that baby dragon as the distracting um, body to the uh, princess tower. But it's it's really about what you what what you're sensing in this moment. If you're if you're in the situation where you have a baby dragon, do you save it for the royal hogs that are coming right now, or do you begin to make your push over here on the left side, knowing that? You got to get the lead back and it's, you only have, well, you we really only have two minutes. So Knight comes in, takes care of that barbarian and spear goblin musketeer up at the top again. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where the musketeer was being played up top and it looked really, it, it looks off place, but now in this situation, Again, the God RF is saying, okay, I'm going to play the Musketeer up here. Now, he has to play it up here because Valkyrie is coming. But he's also saying, okay, are you going to play your Earthquake to where, well, he's going to have to not put the circle over here, but he's going to have to put the circle over here, and Musketeer gets free. So that's the, that's the question that Anubon had to answer when... Musketeer got played right here. Anubon said, nope, we got to get rid of that Musketeer using Valkyrie. And that was the case. Those Spear Goblins just got rid of Valkyrie in time. And some of them got pushed to the left side to, to get, do damage to the Princess Tower. That was, that was fascinating. So Knight comes up here. So in this situation here, remember the Musketeer got played up here. And Anubon answered by... Putting the earthquake here. No musketeer here. Now he's putting the earthquake here. Because also it's it's double time, gonna be triple time uh in a few moments with flying machine coming in. Every HP matters. And he's also gonna be ahead in a poison attack, too. So you would imagine that's coming right now with Gravy out at the top. Snowball being played. I don't uh, I was curious about that snowball being played to the to the right but i think that was the case because the god Arf was probably expecting somebody it, and in this case it ended up being um ice was right here i think he expected ice was to be played right over here to be away from the circle but uh that didn't happen And he does, dodged all those attacks. Musketeer's taking care of Flying Machine. They trade. And the God RF is back in the lead, if you can believe that. <laughs> so so in this in this part here, it, it seems to me when I was thinking about it, I mean, not thinking about it, but when I was looking at it and, and watching this for the first time, I was thinking, okay, whoever makes the next push is going to win this game. And... You you might be if you're trying to get up to legendary or if you're trying to move up in the ranks, uh, you might think, okay, I only have one push in me left. It's about okay, when when should I go? Should I go when my opponent starts making that push? But now we know that uh, Anaban should have. I mean, has what should be. I mean, I would consider it to be the faster of the of the pushes with uh, Royal Hogs. You know, graveyard does take a little bit to to build up. You know, over over time, it becomes um, it becomes pretty amazing if you don't do anything to it. But I would say Anubon has the faster of the two pushes. 
So he goes all out. That's nine elixir. Flying machine. And the God RF answers. Oh, that's, that was unbelievable. But flying machine stays alive. And now it's up to the God RF. So again, it's kind of like they're playing your turn, my turn in this situation here. Is the God RF going to be going to make that push or is he going to play well he can't really play defense he's now trailing um in this in this game as we go to triple elixir here comes anabon again with another royal hogs the god of plays hunt at the top <laughs> that ice whiz right there that was an unsung hero right there the ice was just position any i mean really I, it could have been, it, it was this block, but it really could have been anywhere in this area right here to just kind of defend and slow down anybody that really came in to to stop those Royal Hogs because the Hike got played at the top here. And we're seeing that a lot now, and especially in League Play and CRL East. I mean, I've been seeing it in, in the matches I've been playing where people are just not necessarily discarding Hut as a as kind of like a defensive card but they're willing to give up the hut in order to to deal with any any rush uh, rush down rush attacks that that come in because with hut you're guaranteed at least four spear goblins one that comes out and then the three that uh that uh spawn when the hut um when the hut goes down. So you're guaranteed at least four spear goblins uh, in this situation. And we're seeing a lot of players take advantage of that where they say, okay, if I know I'm going to get four, I'm, I'm just going to use it as a blocker. So we saw that here with the God RF and this ice wizard was really doing damage. The God RF is going now, but that Valkyrie stops musketeer flying machine comes in. And that was the that was the that was the snowball that it missed flying machine. I don't know if, if he missed flying machine because I, I don't think he did because he put poison right here, um, and that and that snowball would have pushed pushed it back and then would have started attacking his. I don't think that was a miss. I think there was almost an anticipation again of somebody being there to to stop these skeletons from the graveyard and nobody came in and the reason nobody came in is because these hogs are coming in right now the skeletons earthquake and there is nobody to stop them and that is game and Audubon comes up with a huge win to give Chivas Esports the win it was just it was an unbelievable match I mean that game was while there was just so many ins and outs, uh, the little things that that made the difference, especially for Anabon who came up with the win, I I, th I thought it was I thought it was fascinating just to see that type of I mean that type of play where you know it was not necessarily they were playing chess, but it was almost like a turn based game where one player had to decide what was going to happen and everybody just reacts and then different attacks were being simultaneous attacks were being defended precisely. It was really, it was just unbelievable. So congratulations to Chivas Esports on the win. I'm going to have all the links uh, in the notes here. I'm just going to end the video right here. It's just, it was just really amazing match. I, I would say if you haven't watched it, go back and watch it and be sure to follow uh, no tilt as well. And be sure to follow this channel here. Cause we're going to be doing a lot more uh, breakdowns of, league play tournament play uh that's been going on so be sure to hit the like button wherever you're watching us and again be sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next video